The Pixel 7 Pro is the first Pixel phone, at least in quite a while, that I'm willing to re recommend to just about anyone who wants a high-end, top-tier flagship phone. Because despite the fact that this doesn't isn't priced like some several other flagship phones, it is an incredibly great phone in just about every single metric, which is pretty impressive considering just a few short years ago, Pixel found themselves way behind. For that reason, I'm going to assume that you're already considering getting the Pixel 7 Pro, and you're just gonna see how many great things you get to experience versus whatever crappy phone you had beforehand. So that's how we're going to frame this review. How great is upgrading to the Pixel 7 Pro from other phones from a couple years ago? Let's talk about it. This is an OISO, and this is the Google Pixel 7 Pro review. Just a couple years ago, many people said that Google could not compete on hardware, and that's why they had a bunch of funky phones that never really actually had flagship level design, and they didn't sell them for those prices. The Pixel 7 Pro, in many ways, competes directly with flagship top tier hardware from other manufacturers. It is a very, very unique design, and it's a very nerdy design. If you like something that sticks out and something that's very, very recognizable, then the Pixel 7 Pro is the right phone to get. If instead you want something that blends in or is a little bit more subtle, then go ahead, go get an iPhone or a Galaxy S22 Ultra. Both are incredible phones, just not as unique as the Pixel 7 Pro. This year, Google specifically switched to a metal frame for the camera bump, which first of all, looks even more unique than the last year. Second of all, it's pretty asymmetrical and it looks a little bit odd in my eyes, but chances are it probably came from need because I had to, I have a feeling that they had a lot of issues with broken camera glass with the Pixel 6 Pro series, but that's just an assumption. When you're getting the Pixel 7 Pro, then generally you should be going for this very, very cool green color because it is unlike just about any other phone on the market. It has a very, very slight golden bronze tint to the metal frame, which is very, very unique. But if you're boring, then you can instead go for something like this, this very, very nice flat white model that has a more traditional silver frame. Both of these are very, very pretty colors. I just, I like this one for no reason, no reason. The ergonomics of the Pixel 7 Pro are good, if not great. I like the fact that there's a very smooth curve from the frame of the phone into the back, so my hand curves around it very nicely. It doesn't have quite the square grippiness of the iPhone 14 series or other newer Galaxy phones do, but I actually prefer this considering it's easier for me to hold the smoother curve in my hand. Turn the phone around and you've got basically what is a standard Android phone looking display. Very, very tiny camera cutout, big edge to edge display, tiny little bezels, a slight curve on the edges, and 1440p, 120 hertz, which means that scrolling through this phone is going to be incredibly smooth, which we'll talk about the performance in a little bit. Generally, this is an incredible display. It's great to watch movies, great to browse Twitter or YouTube or whatever you browse on this display. I will say that Many people don't like curved displays, and I understand it. In many lighting scenarios, there's just a very, very slight glint off the edge of this display that can get a little bit distracting, but thankfully this curve isn't that drastic, so it's not as bad. Chances are, if you're upgrading from an iPhone, then you've got a 60 hertz display, which means that your phone's screen basically flashes at 60 times per second versus 120 times per second on the Pixel 7 Pro. This just results in slightly less smooth scrolling, but a lot of people don't really notice it, including me. I don't really notice the difference too much, but if you are particularly sensitive to it, then you will enjoy the difference of the smoother 120 hertz refresh rate. If you're coming from an Android phone, you might already have a slightly higher refresh rate, so you might already know the benefits and whether you will benefit from it. If you're coming from an iPhone from the last couple years, then you probably have noticed your iPhone starting to slow down over the last couple of years, which is pretty standard for most phones. Any new Android or iPhone, it's going to be incredibly fast feeling and you'll feel a lot of smoothness. And the Pixel 7 Pro is no exception. It's an incredibly fast, effortless experience and all apps out open incredibly quickly and run incredibly quickly. The storage is super fast, all the experiences that you'd expect out of any new phone. If you compare this side by side with most modern phones, you won't be able to tell the difference. 
The battery life will likely be a big upgrade in most cases. I've noticed that this phone typically lasts me an entire day and a little bit into the next day, depending on how long I use it. Many phones on the market today can make it a full day and a half or more, but this isn't quite that extent. I typically got between six and a half to eight hours of screen on time, which is solid, but generally my Galaxy S22 Plus or S22 Ultra and my iPhone 14 Plus both got substantially more battery life than this one did. If you're coming from an iPhone, chances are you have Face ID or you have a built-in fingerprint sensor at the bottom of your phone. This one thankfully has both. There is a face unlock system that uses the front camera and quickly unlocks your phone automatically, which you'll have to set up in settings. In addition, there's a built-in fingerprint sensor that sits right underneath the display and is always on and sensitive, so if I press on the display, <laughs> it will unlock the phone. Now, it's not quite as reliable as like the fingerprint sensor down on the bottom. You can see that I missed it a little bit there, but for the most part, it is incredibly fast and a great experience. If you're coming from a Samsung phone from the last few years, chances are you already have an under display fingerprint sensor and it generally works pretty solid. This won't be a massive improvement unless you have one of the first generation sensors from quite a few years ago. It's fast, but not quite as fast as the Galaxy S22 series, for example. The big upgrade when you're coming from just about any phone from a couple years ago is going to be in the cameras. This has three cameras. The first is just a standard typical lens that you would take most of your photos with and it takes incredibly great photos in night, in portrait mode, in any scenario. Then there's a wide angle sensor that will allow you to basically effectively back up and take a lot more image into the shot. So if you have a big family you're trying to take a picture of, or if you're on a street corner right across the street from like a massive cathedral and you wanna get the whole cathedral in the shot, this will be able to do so incredibly well. The third sensor is very, very interesting and it's a telephoto sensor that's unlike most other phones in the market. Essentially, there is a camera inside the phone that then shoots against a mirror that then faces you outside of the phone. That allows you to get a very, very deep telephoto image and zoom in very, very far. The default zoom is 5X, but it can go up to 30 times and still get an incredible photo from probably about 10 to 15 times away, which means that previously, when maybe on your iPhone X, you only had a two times zoom lens, now you can actually take photos from the other side of the city and still get incredibly impressive shots or the other side of a room, or the other side of your office, or anything like that. It's, it changes the game. If you're considering instead to upgrade to like an iPhone 14 or 14 Plus, you won't get a telephoto sensor at all. And if you're instead in upgrading to like a Galaxy S22 Plus, then you will get a telephoto sensor with only three times zoom. So this will beat most other phones in its price bracket. Pixels are famous for incredibly great cameras, but I will say that typically I prefer the look and the color science of the Galaxy series this year than I do the Pixel 7 Pro. There are some photos that the Pixel 7 Pro will win on, but my Galaxy S22 Ultra from earlier this year still takes some great shots. What sets the Pixel series apart from just about any other phone on the market is the software. Now, Android 13 on the Pixel 7 Pro from a UI experience standpoint looks a little bit weird. It looks a little different than the experience you might be familiar with on older Android devices. There's bigger UI elements and there's a lot more fluorescent colors across the entire experience that is supposed to make it a little bit more personalized, but in my mind, in my eyes, it makes it look a little bit more flat and boring. The color of the UI is often set based off of the background that you have on your phone. And since my background always changes, I have a ever-changing different color scheme on my phone. For me, that color scheme changes based off of whatever background I currently have. And so since the background cycles, you can see right now, it's got this fluorescent green color, which isn't quite as splashy as the dark green on my background, which that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't really love the experience. But what's really interesting is some of these unique software features that Pixels give you that no other phones give you. So for example, 
If you happen to take a photo and someone photo bombs in the back of the photo, the pixel will let you remove that person from the photo by just tapping on them, which is really cool. The feature that I love the most, absolutely, is the call screening feature. So if someone gives me a phone call and I don't know the number, then I can basically tell Google Assistant to basically take the call for me, ask them who it is, and then communicate with them and tell them you've got the wrong number when usually they absolutely do. It's really nice to be able to just quickly manage phone calls when I'm in a meeting and I can't pick up my phone. The last feature that I love with Pixels is the live transcription features that is, are built into the audio recording app. So if I want to record a script for my next YouTube video, all I need to do is open up the recorder and speak into the app and it will automatically transcribe that into a written script with commas and periods and exclamation points and everything. That also applies to text messages. So if I wanna text someone, while not a lot, a lot of people basically dictate texts anymore, because usually the experience is pretty bad, on Pixel devices, it's really solid. And from the Pixel 6 Pro on, it was incredibly good. So obviously by this point, you're gonna go Pixel, right? So should you go for the Pixel 7 Pro or just the Pixel 7? Well, the Pixel 7 is a good, I'll call it budget option. I mean, it's $600. It's somewhere in a budget range because it's cheaper than most other flagships on the market. And you get a lot, a lot of the same features for a significant less price. Whereas the Pixel 7 Pro is $900, which $900 is still cheaper than a lot of other flagships on the market, but it's still a pretty penny. In my mind, if you don't, if you aren't like a smartphone nerd and you just want a good phone, the Pixel 7 is a great solution and you can get a lot of discounts on it. But if you are wanting the best phone out there, Pixel 7 Pro is pretty far up there. And in general, coming from any older Galaxy phone or any older iPhone, or maybe you're on Motorola or LG or anything like that, the Pixel 7 Pro is going to be an incredible upgrade. Yes, it's going to be a big transition, especially coming from an iPhone, but it's going to be a good one. You're going to really benefit from it. It is one of the best phones on the market and you're absolutely going to enjoy it. Now, for those of you who have stuck around that might already be considering the Pixel 7 Pro versus other flagships on the market. The Pixel 7 Pro is not my favorite Android phone of the year. It's missing a couple things relative to the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which my review is coming out soon, my six month review is coming out soon. That is an incredible phone. But if I really wanted to stick with Pixel devices, which I perfectly could understand wanting to do because of all the software features, then the Pixel 7 Pro would be a great one. I'm honestly surprised that this is in the same price range as this. The Pixel 7 Pro in just about every single metric beats the iPhone 14 Plus. It's a much better experience if you're willing to get over the fact that it runs Android. And I absolutely am. That's a plus for me. Thank you for watching NOI. So I hope you like this review of the Google Pixel 7 Pro. I tried to approach this review a little bit differently, not expecting that you knew everything about everything there is about other phones on the market. And instead thinking that you're coming into the Pixel new. If you're a big fan of the channel and you aren't a big fan of this sort of format, let me know down in the comments because I kind of get tired of doing the same thing over and over again, if you haven't already noticed. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you for watching NOISO and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.